Hello again, how is it going? It is Fako coming at you with most likely the last card reveal before the expansion begins. Now we have a wide variety of cards here. I've already gone through and checked them. I'm just gonna come through and give them a quick rating because some of these cards are a bit more easy to understand and grasp than some of the other crazy mechanics happening right now. And we're getting cards for each region too. Only a few, but a couple to play with. Shall we kick on? So we have a build water card, epic, jack the winner, round start, create a fleeting sleep with the fishes in hand. This is a 5 mana 5-6, five, pretty good stat line. Sleep with the fishes is a 2 mana slow speed spell that will allow you to, to deal 2 to an ally to deal 2 to the enemy nexus. It's going to be pretty hard to kind of justify running jack the winner in some sort of like tempo deck, right? This already with just this one card we get to play with, like there's no deck that really makes this a suitable option. You'd be better off just playing Gangplank because you oftentimes have to kill your own units, right? So it doesn't seem very reasonable. Like you can play it with kegs and that's kind of cute. It is zero mana, but then you kind of have to have like the boss. Like, like think about all the build water decks right now. Would you consider running Jack the winner? I probably would not right now. The next card we do have is the monkey business. Two mana, slow speed spell, summon a powder monkey, plunder, summon another powder monkey next round. I don't think this is a very good option. I think monkey idol would just be strictly uh, 10 times better. I would not recommend this card for whatever reason. For the fallen, eight mana Demarcian card. When you summon an elite, reduce the cost of this card by one. And then when you play it for each ally that died this round, summon a dauntless vanguard. This card might be really good in a mid-range deck. This could be quite a good option. It's going to force you to kind of build more into elites. And it's like a semi little mini harrowing that when they kind of clear your board, like say they play Ruination against you, which is a really powerful card oftentimes against mid-range. Play this for like maybe three, maybe four mana. Refill your board with Dauntless Vanguards. I think that's pretty powerful, just in the current metagame, but who knows what the metagame is going to look like next expansion, but this card doesn't seem that bad at all. I think that's a very playable card. Now this card though, <laughs> singular will, slow speed, pick an ally, recall all other units. This is Ionia's big answer to the big meta we're about to go into. It doesn't really do much against spell shield but it gives you a single card that can allow you to just flip the board back into their hand. Um, I don't think this card will be very playable as of right now, but how big is the meta going to be? And like most of the big decks are gonna be running big cards. We're not really have an answer to stop this if they're not in Ionia as well. So in the current meta game, this card is extremely unplayable, but judging by where things are going to maybe lead into, it makes Singular Will somewhat a consideration, but probably not going to generally see play. Basilisk Bloodseeker, 7 mana 7-4, seven, play deal 1 to an ally and an enemy 4 times. 7 mana 7-4 seven, with Overwhelm. Um, I think I would just prefer to run Decimates in my deck, if I'm not mistaken. So this card seems kind of like poo. New card for Noxus to play with, but I don't see it really finding a home anywhere, unfortunately. Now I found this card very interesting. Apprehend, two mana, stun an enemy. If you have a Darius, rally. So we, we're actually, we're getting cards that synergize with previous champions, which is really cool. Like this is the first time we've seen a card like this, which literally is a new card that states that you need to have this champion though. That's kind of cool, and we'll probably start to see this trend happening a lot more. Where there'll be more cards coming out in the future that have some synergies, direct synergy, necessary synergy, with previous champions. So that's kind of cool. However, I don't think like you're going to really have Darius on the field oftentimes. So this is a bad card, but I can see cards like these being really good with some other champions, depending on what the effect is like don't get me wrong a two mana rally card is a little insane with the stun ability like this is a really good card if you have darius on the field but you have to have darius on the field to meet this requirement gives you like a crazy finisher so you know maybe there might be a good mid-range noxus deck that can run this and like this is a finisher 
It's so cheap and it's a crazy effect. I wonder what happens if when you play it, because you can still stun an enemy, but if you play it and they clear your Darius in response to this, I wonder if you rally. That's probably the most interesting card here for sure. Other than this one, try beam, impro, be later. So deal one to a unit, summon a random one cost unit. While I'm in hand, increase both by one point when you play a three cost card. So you play like a get excited, this becomes a deal two, uh, summon a random two cost. Infinite scaling. Um, you could definitely throw this into some PNZ decks currently as a one of, and it's kind of cute, but at four mana, you really want to be hitting that deal four, summon a four, right? That's at least where you want it bare minimum, which means you have to be playing a fair bit of three cost cards. I'm glad it says it could be any, like this three cost card in general. So it counts units. So that's a really good too. Chuck this in like a Draven Jinx deck. And then you play like, you, know, you, you don't really hit it a lot of time. It, it requires you to kind of build your deck around it a little bit more, but not too directly. Like you're not going to sacrifice your deck building too much. You just might consider this card and then throwing in a couple more three drops to kind of boot, give it a bit of a boost. Like getting it to a four mana deal, a four mana deal three, summon a three cost is pretty good actually. So if you get around there, that's decent value, but it does have infinite scaling and you could do some crazy stuff with it later. That's a very interesting card. Don't sure, not sure how playable it really is, but you know, pretty cool. One mana, zero three, Star Shepherd. When you heal a damaged ally, grant me plus two, plus zero. As of right now, I don't think there's enough power behind this kind of healing archetype, but now it exists and it's on the way. Surely in the future, we'll see Sorica and this card probably becomes a bit more playable. But as of right now, it's a worse uh, free old one drop. 3 mana, 1, 2, Fledgling, Stellarcorn, uh, Lifesteal, and Spell Shield. I don't think this card is a very good. Not enough stats, and we don't care about the Spell uh, Lifesteal too much in whatever this deck wants to fit into. Like, you're not going to throw this into your Control deck because it's not enough value. You're not going to throw this into your Aggro deck because it's not Aggro enough. It's somewhere stuck in the middle where it's never really going to find a home unless there's some sort of crazy healing archetype. 3 mana 2-2, two, two, Giddy Spark Lologist. <laughs> Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Play, if you behold a celestial card, grant an ally, plus one, plus one, and spell shield. It's decent value. Like this really wants to, this kind of ties a little bit of behold and celestial cards together to consider using a card like this. It's a cheaper bastion that provides your body and stats. Maybe this card is actually okay and somebody's going to find out a way to use this appropriately. But as of right now, I don't think I see it. I don't see it, but it looks strong. Like even though it's a three mana two, two, that effect is very powerful. And it's like you're playing a one mana, give it units plus one, plus one and spell shield. That's pretty good in terms of like minusing the stats. However, this card's big garbage. Eight mana, eight, four. Grandfather Ramal. Overwhelm and Spell Shield, grant an ally, plus four. Okay, I can bash up on this card a little bit, but it does have that really important stat, which is Spell Shield, which means that you're gonna be playing an eight, uh, eight mana, eight four with Overwhelm, which buffs another unit to kind of make it an eight eight with Overwhelm. I might be bashing on this card a little bit, but I generally don't think it's that good because we don't really see like you, you could just play Trindomir and it's probably a little bit better, but it doesn't have spell shield. That's the main point here, right? So how valuable is that spell shield? I think a lot of the time this might guarantee Grandfather Ramol pushes damage. Oftentimes it will push damage. How much damage? Well, it depends what kind of deck they're running. I mean, if they're, if they're playing some sort of like mid range deck, you'll play an eight mana, eight four and probably slap them for a lot of damage. This can kind of give Targon the ability to build a more aggressive deck where maybe they hit that destroyer from some celestial cards, play a grandfather Ramol, maybe they dip into Behold and play Trundle and just kind of like play a beefy mid-range deck that closes out the game on like grandfather Ramol. So try and make an aggro deck, but it's kind of hard to make an aggro style deck with this kind of finisher though. So I don't think this card is going to be that good. And last but not least, 1 mana 1-1, one, one, Poro Fly. Targon's Poro is going to be a Spell Shield 1-1. One, one. It's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. 
but Poro decks don't generally turn out to be that good. So this card probably won't be seeing much play. Alrighty, <laughs> so it's official. These are all the cards that we'll be receiving now for anybody who's keeping up with the date with the videos I've been posting. They're all out. Every region is getting some cards, including Bilgewater, Noxus, and PNZ. However, they're not getting as many right now, but they will in the future, including Demacia as well, not as many cards. But next expansion cycles, I'll be back to talk about some more of the reveals. So yeah, it's been pleasure. I know I said the other day that we were done, but we weren't done. We're here right now. And yeah, it's been an absolute blast. You guys have been insane. And I'll um I'll see you at Masters.